Hey everyone, Gron K for the Flame Learning Channel. In Part 5 of Acts of Colour Management in Flame 2017 Extension 1, we looked at the simple linear colour management workflow. This involved setting up a project to work in Scene Linear Rec 709 and converting all the material into that colour space for compositing. All based on a simple degamma then regamma approach. Although that method has been commonplace for many years, the final result appears adequate, but it is technically incorrect in terms of colour science. This is for a variety of reasons I'm not getting into. In Part 6 we'll run through how to use ASIS in your workflow. ASIS is the new SMPTE standard for colour science developed by the Academy and this should allow you to composite with mathematical accuracy on top of great looking results. ASUS 1.0 is more suited to working with CGI, LOG and camera native formats. So if all your media is already output referred Rec 709, the simple linear workflow policy may be a better fit. Now we've already provided a colour policy preset for an ASUS scene linear workflow, so you don't have to make your own. Just ensure that when you set up your project, you choose the ASUS 1.0 option from the colour policy presets. Create your project and launch Flame. Now very briefly in the Colour Management Preferences, I want to point out the following. The Project Working Colour Space and the Action Colour Space are set to ASUS CG. So the default configuration for all settings in this project is ASUS CG. ASUS CG is the recommended Academy Working Space when it comes to 3D rendering and compositing. The colour space gamut is wide enough to manage a range of data, but not too wide to make it unusable as a working colour space. Remember that the broadcast colour space and graphics colour space are system based and not project based. So if you connect an HDR monitor, you change the broadcast colour space and there are viewing rules set up to offer HDR specific ASUS view transforms. And if you select a cinema projector, there are also cinema specific view transforms available. In ASUS, look transforms should be applied in the ASUS CC colour space. You can load an ASC, CDL or 3D LUT here as your default look transform. And if you're using an ASUS view transform, the look will be applied in ASUS CC to accurately match the onset workflow. The look transform may be toggled on and off in the viewport. Now in terms of the input rules, any OpenEXR files that comply with SMPT 2065-4 and have the ASUS image container flag set will automatically be recognised as ASUS colour space. The colour policy also comes with a range of generic rules for a variety of sources and you may add rules using any of the standard ASUS input transforms or IDTs. Any media matching the various patterns will be tagged with their relevant colour space. For example, the Rec 709, SLOG3, VLOG, ASUS CG and ADX10 rules will tag media with the appropriate colour space if the file or directory names match the specified patterns. As for the DPX and OpenEXR media, they will be tagged based on the file extension. So all DPX media will be tagged as log to lin in ASUS and all OpenEXR media will be tagged as ASUS CG. My CG renders have already been rendered in ASUS CG as OpenEXRs, so we'll be using this rule. Any other media not set up in the rules will automatically be tagged as sRGB unless they are recognised from the header as ASUS files or camera raw files. Now I'm going to composite OpenEXRs with ARRI Log C media. There is an input rule for Log C as part of the ASUS 1.0 colour policy. However, I have my Log C in a specific directory. So I have modified the pattern to take this into account and any media in the ARRI Log C directory will be tagged as Log C. As mentioned in previous videos, creating input rules is not mandatory because you can manually tag media on input, but this will automate the whole process for us. Now if you switch over to the viewing rules, 
There are a range of ASUS viewing transforms for a variety of displays when looking at scene linear material. For instance, the SDR video adapts to the native white point of video, which is D65, and should be used if the primary deliverable is video. Whereas the SDR video D60 SIM shows the native white point for cinema through a video display and is useful if you are using a D65 monitor to work on a cinema orientated project. The other ASUS viewing rules offer cinema projection and HDR monitoring. I also want to point out that the Linear Gamma Corrected and Linear Low Contrast viewing transforms are also available for scene linear media in this colour policy. However, you would use these for diagnostic purposes if required. There are also additional viewing rules for media tagged as video and log. No extra viewing rules need to be added. Now close the preferences and let's import the media via the Media Hub. In my root folder, I have a few directories. And in this scenario, I want to import different types of media and auto convert them to ASUS CG. So ensure the colour management mode is set to auto convert. The input colour space is set to from file or rules and the working colour space is from project. Now since the input rules and the working colour space are already configured as you saw earlier, this will automate the process for all my media. So when we go into the ARRI Log C directory, all the clips were assigned the ARRI Log C input colour space and converted to ASUS CG. You can see all this information in the preview window as well as the list view. So I'll drag one of these shots into my reel. Next, if we go to the OpenEXR directory, I have a few CGI renders. Now here are some renders that we produced using the ASUS CG colour space. The input rules have already been set up to recognise that all EXR media will be tagged as ASUS CG. Therefore, no conversions will be applied to the media and they will be imported and tagged as is. Please note that the associated alpha channel will be tagged as matte and this will be viewed without any transform or conversions. As a final mention, if we go into either the ARRI RAW or RED directory and select any of the media, Flame will automatically recognise these native formats without having to set up any rules. Flame will obtain the appropriate ASUS values and then convert them to ASUS CG working colour space. Now moving on from importing, when we look at the media in batch, everything should be in the ASUS CG colour space except for any mats or alphas. No extra preparation tasks should be required. If you need to convert between different colour spaces, either use the clip's preprocessing settings to change the colour space at the media level or use the colour management node to change the colour space at the flow graph level. Now look at any of these clips in the viewer. They all should be displayed through the ASUS 1.0 SDR Video View Transform. This is because I am using a sRGB graphics monitor and a REC709 broadcast monitor. If I was using an HDR device or cinema projection, the other view transforms will automatically become available. We could also switch to the ASUS 1.0 SDR Video D60 SIM which will give you the cinema white point in the context of the video display. And finally, for all scene linear material, you have the Linear Gamma Corrected and Low Contrast View Transforms as diagnostic views. We'll leave the View Transform at ASUS 1.0 SDR Video. The Matte or Alpha is raw data and that is viewed with a matte setting on the viewport. Now coming back to the batch schematic, certain nodes are now capable of automatically detecting the incoming colour space. For example, if I go back to the batch node bin and drag out a Kia RGB node, when we look at its menus, the image type is set to Auto. So when you connect an input into this tool, it will read the tagged colour space and automatically set the image type to either scene linear or other. So you should not have to tell these nodes what mode to work in. It can be done for you. In the case of the ASUS policy, obviously the tool will choose scene linear from this tagged input. Now you can build your flow graph with any of the nodes, 
but I want to focus on the Action node because the 3D Compositor is also now applying Colour Management. So I'll go to the Custom Node bin and drag out a pre-made Action node to save time. Now there is no difference in the way you connect your media within the Colour Managed environment. What you do need to be aware of is that Action is now expecting the media in the ASUS CG Colour Space. You can tell this by reading the node description. Action's default colour space is initially set out in the Colour Policy and you could alter the default settings in the Colour Management Preferences. But if you go into the Action Node Preferences, you can access the current Colour Management settings for this node and you can alter the colour space if required. Now if you change the setting from User Defined to Same as Back, if you fed a background input into Action with a different colour space, similar to Handing Resolution, Action will switch to the background colour space. Now let's look at the result view of the Action node. In the viewport, Action is showing the media through ASUS 1.0 SDR Video Viewing Transform, expecting an input from the Action Working Space. So all the media coming into Action must be in the matching colour space. Very importantly, I need to reiterate that Action is not performing any colour space conversions to layers coming in from Batch or the Timeline. It is simply expecting all the media to be in the appropriate colour space. So you should auto-convert your media to the working colour space before bringing it into Action. However, when you use the Action Import node, you will have the same options as in the Media Hub to auto-convert into the Action Working Space. Secondly, all internal generators will match the Action Colour Space. So Lens Flare Textures, Substance and Substance PBR will all be converted to the ASUS CG Colour Space in this case. The ASUS CG Colour Space also gives good results if you're compositing with image-based lighting and physically-based shaders. Just check out the upcoming video on PBR shaders in Action. Ultimately, you're looking at a combination of LogC converted into ASUS CG, composited with an ASUS CG render. Now there are loads of other videos showing compositing in Action, so let's move on to the next stage once the flow graph is complete. I'm referring to rendering. Back in the Batch Schematic, if you just wanted to render out your result and preserve the ASUS CG Colour Space, just add a Render Node or Write Node to the end of the flow graph. As with a few other nodes in Batch, your Output Nodes will also show the Colour Space in the Node Description. So you can maintain a consistent Colour Space throughout the entire Batch flow graph. But if you wanted to change the Colour Space during the render, you can do it in a number of ways. The first method is to go back to the Batch Node bin and locate the Colour Management node. Drag out the node and add it before the Output node in the flow graph. Double-click the node for its controls and switch to the 2-up view with ALT 2. Set the left viewport to Front with F1 and the right viewport to Result with F4. Ensure the Result view is selected. So you have your input and output in the viewports. Note that the Viewing Transform is identical in both viewports. Now in the Mode pull-down menu, you have a load of options for doing colour space conversions. Firstly, if you want to convert the ASUS CG Colour Space into a Video Colour Space for delivery, select the Viewing Transform option. This mode takes the Viewing Transform and bakes it as part of the Render Output. In other words, if you've been viewing the ASUS CG Colour Space through a REC709 display, you can tell Flame to take what you see in the viewport and create a REC709 output. It's basically the what you see is what you'll get approach. I see this in the viewport, it's what I want, please give an output with the appropriate colour space. So I will set the tagged colour space as from Source, the display to REC709 Video, and the View Transform to ASUS 1.0 SDR Video to emulate how I've been working. So this will give you a REC709 deliverable. I also want to highlight the Input Transform options as an alternative conversion tool. For starters, it is the identical tool we used when importing the media. So when outputting, you should use the Input Transform tool 
if you want to invert the transform you applied when you imported the media in order to deliver a comp in the original colour space. You could also use it to convert from a working space to a similar space such as Asus to Scene Linear Rec. 709 or Rec. 709 video to Rec. 2020 video. For example, if you're outputting this composite to OpenEXRs, it's a good idea to deliver it in ASUS 2065-1 and not ASUS CG. So set your working space to ASUS 2065-1. Next, select ASUS CG from the input space menu. Looking at the viewports, the left viewport shows you the composite in ASUS CG and the right viewport shows you your composite in ASUS 2065-1 as your deliverable. So the viewports both look the same, but if you click Bypass, you will see that the media has been converted. So remember that View Transform is the recommended tool to create video deliverables, and Input Transform is the appropriate tool to get back to an original colour space or convert between similar colour spaces. So these are just some of the modes to perform colour space conversions when you need them. Now the other way to do a colour space conversion on output without a colour management node is just to use the colour management tools that are built directly into the output nodes. Just enabling these menus will give you the same functionality that you've seen before. Now as I mentioned at the very beginning of this video, with ASUS you can easily bring lots of sources into a common working space. Apply a high quality viewing transform, customised for your display, and produce a future proof wide dynamic range master. This should also give you the confidence knowing that you are using the colour science standards recommended by the Academy. In part 7 of Active Colour Management in Flame 2017 Extension 1, we focus our attention to creating colour managed exports. Comments, feedback and suggestions are always welcome and appreciated. Thank you for watching and please subscribe to the Flame Learning Channel for future videos.